for Mr. Echidna's episode 14 review analysis. Amelia is single? <sighs> She's 14, guys. She's 14. Mentally 14. <laughs> but do you really mean it? You won't go anywhere? I'll never leave you. <laughs> I'll be here with you forever. Yeah. And you know what the craziest thing is? Remember, this dude didn't even make a contract with Amelia in Frozen Bond until the end. And it was shown that Puck and Amelia hung out a lot. So why the hell do you need to leave now after you broke the contract? I don't understand that. You can still exist. You can still chill with us. Here with you forever. I think I understand how Amelia must have felt when Puck left her because I felt the same way a couple months ago when ReZero left me. Wah, but unlike wah. Puck or my dad, when I Although. needed ReZero the most, it actually came back. Starting off 2021 with brand new episodes of ReZero is seriously the perfect way to kick off the new year, and 2021 is already looking better than 2020. Wow, my guys. My first impressions for the second core of ReZero Season 2 is that the future is very bright, not only for us the viewers, but also the the ReZero characters as well. Subaru hmm? no longer has to carry his burdens alone. Otto has mastered the art of stealth, and Amelia is finally single. Yeah, you know what that means. It's time to let our grooming just undertake its way. Subaru the Groomer Theory since season 1 finale. It's happening more than ever, especially with this girl being so isolated and, and, and hopeless and desperate for something, and Subaru being there and all this shit. Thank you, Puck, I guess. I did notice a bit of improvement in the art style. There were some really great shots. The voice acting and everything else was just as amazing as always. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a really great season here. But I think that this is the ascension too. Like, you cannot have fucking 13 episodes of taking L's. Straight up, part one of ReZero Season 2 is just an entire L streak. I cannot think of a single fucking positive thing. Well, no, that's a lie. But if we're talking about making actually some sort of positive progress, I feel like season two, part one is suffering in just the most creative ways and just taking loss after loss after loss. And I can definitely understand why people would feel like this show is dragging itself. We're still stuck in the sanctuary. Subaru seems to make no progress and probably why a lot of people, the people that dropped this show always says the same thing about season two, about how they hated just being stuck in the sanctuary and it felt like it was just trudging along. There's a lot of more lore shown in Season 2 Part 1 compared to Season 1, but the setup is... God damn, it's taking its time. But this new episode begins right where we left off in 2020, continuing the conversation between best boy and best boy. If you think back to season one, it's pretty remarkable how much Otto has developed not only as a character, but also in the minds of the viewers. Remember when he tried to feed Subaru to the white whale? When we Based. Based. I loved it when Otto did that. This motherfucker came on board and is a bait for the white whale, bro. I don't blame Otto for that. She get the hell out of my cart. First saw that, we all hated Otto. But no, nah, you hated Otto for that? I thought he was so based. I was like, finally, get this fucking loser off the cart. Like, I'm not gonna, if I was him, I'd do the same shit. You're gonna risk your life for a random fucking stranger also shitting on you the entire time? Get the fuck off! Did Otto, but since then, he's been doing nothing but growing as a character, and this episode served as another reminder of how far he's come. Not only does Otto now consider Subaru a friend and an yep. ally, but as we saw in episode 8, he's even willing to die for him. That's right, Garfield just snatched him up. He also, Otto also played an integral part in the season 1 finale too, just driving our cart like that, but Otto has been a delight. Didn't think, like, who is the person that's going to save us? Who's the person that's going to turn everything around? It was him. He was there all this time, but we never considered asking him for help. Ooh. Multiple times, Otto has uplifted Subaru during his darkest moments, and the truth is, ReZero as we know it would not be the same without Otto. Agreed. So, let's take a look into a parallel world where Otto never existed. Auto never existed, then I guess Subaru would become more like Roswell as he figures out that there's nothing he can do and he needs to sacrifice something. Without Otto, Subaru wouldn't have been able to catch up to Amelia's carriage True. at the end of season one. True. With no one there to get rid of the explosive mana stones, the result would be dead Amelia. Yep. Now remember, when Amelia dies, what Puck. usually happens next is the apocalypse. Eventually, Ryan. Apocalypse. Reinhardt would stop him, but a lot of people would freeze to death first. Subaru would then be living in a world of hell because if Amelia died. Oh, also. I bet to anyone else. I, I, I should have mentioned this when, they, when we did the cut content about the Reinhardt versus Puck thing. 
I bet any normal person would have been frozen to death if they were this close to Puck right now. But Reinhardt probably has some bullshit blessing, divine protection, or just like, Reinhardt's body temperature will never fall below a certain degree, therefore make him an immune from, like, freeze from Puck. Lee Reinhardt would stop him, but a lot of people would freeze to death first. Subaru would then be living in a world of hell, because if Amelia dies, that means the timeline differs from the one in Roswell's gospel. Like mm -hmm. we saw in Season 2, Episode 11, Ros- Actually, it's not a gospel, it's a grimoire. One of two copies that is truest to the Tomb of Wisdom. Wall would start killing off main characters, and eventually himself, as a means of forcing Subaru to reset the timeline. So the point is, if you ever hear someone shit-talking best boy Otto, just remember that he's the very fabric that holds ReZero together. It's very true. If, if season one was Rem hyping Subaru up and helping him, you know, ascend, I feel like season two is Otto, man. It is. Who else right now could have done this? Rem is gone, Amelia's suffering by herself, Subaru is alone, and he's getting fucking manipulated by a Roswell, Echidna, you name it. Otto was there the entire time. Alright, I might have exaggerated just a little bit, but seriously, Otto has influenced the story quite a lot, and he's one of the few side characters that were able to ascend beyond their supporting role. Nice. The author did give us some insight on Twitter as to why Subaru always tries to do everything himself, which apparently is because of Rem, which I kind of found interesting and thought it would be worth sharing. What? He won't ask for help because of Rem? Subaru's inability to rely on others as well as the terrible encounters with Kidna and Roswell, is largely due to Rem. As a result of relying, Rem has become that kind of thing. So I instinctively avoid relying on someone. Because he relied on Rem too much. And then Rem got fucked up. But Subaru didn't want to repeat the situation. Is that the idea? found interesting and thought it would be worth sharing. Anyway, this episode was mostly dialogue, but that's because it was the setup episode for all the action that's to come, and I think this next scene made that pretty obvious. The Roswell scene in this week's episode pretty much sets up the plot for the rest of the season. At this point, all the surprises are over. The first half of the season established that Roswell is the bad guy and Subaru mm -hmm. is the good guy. This next half will be the indirect battle between them. So to metaphorically declare war against each other, Subaru and Roswell make a bet. Straight bet. A straight bet. Whoa. This amazing song was last played when Subaru jumped off the cliff in season one. Yeah, and it's the title of this episode and maybe the light novel chapter two. So it's kind of crazy how the song from season one was already setting up the actual thing that's going to happen in season two. Episode seven, which was pretty much the turning point of that arc. Yep. Similarly, this week's episode can also be considered the turning point of the current arc. Subaru now understands the many obstacles and challenges he has to overcome this season, and he's finally mustered up the confidence and determination to face them head on. So he makes this bet with Roswell, and the stakes are very high. Subaru will put everything he has into his current life, and if it doesn't work, then he'll do whatever Roswell says in his next life. But how would Roswell ever know that? You know what I mean? Alright, we make a bet here. Roswell, I'm gonna save the mansion and the sanctuary in this run. If I win, then you leave the book and leave with me. If I fail, you would never know. Because I would have looped. And the Grimoire, would, it, would the Grimoire have told him? Hey, Subaru's Grimoire has told him! Unless Subaru himself admits it. Like, how would the Grimoire tell him? <laughs> how? The Grimoire would have updated and said, This motherfucker lying, he already failed the last loop? We don't know exactly what kind of details are written in the grimoire. We never even see the contents of the grimoire. It, it could be Subaru himself maybe admitting the mistakes, which I think would be so fucking stupid, but okay. However, if Subaru wins the bet, Roswell will have to abandon his gospel. But let's think about this for a it's minute. It's a grimoire! Why the hell would Subaru make such a reckless, dangerous bet? Because Otto has planned something. Otto is a genius, and his merchant's wit has allowed him to come up with the multiple conspiracy plot that's gonna be working in our favor. If Roswell wins, then ReZero as we know it is over. They might as well just adapt the Greed If story at that point because everyone except Roswell would suffer. So for Subaru to risk all of that, he would either require a gigantic set of balls hmm. or a well thought out plan. Most likely that, and again, Otto. Otto just clutching for us. And based on Rom's testimony, it probably isn't the former. This episode also gave us some valuable information during Subaru's conversation with Ryuzu. And yes, this is another new clone. So far, we've met Ryuzu Shima, Ryuzu Bilma, Bilma and now Ryuzu Arma. 
She explains that Garfield tried to take the trials and most likely had to face the moment he and his sister were abandoned by their mother. But as we know, Garfield couldn't pass the trials, meaning we can assume that this traumatic experience in his past is still affecting him today, and most mm -hmm. likely has influenced his outlook on life and his views on the sanctuary's liberation. We also got to see Amelia dressed in her casual clothes looking absolutely this is very cute. Even though she's so depressed here and it's a sad moment, this Amelia hiding underneath the blankets in a fetal position is kind of cute. In a fucked up way. Absolutely adorable with a blanket over her head. And finally, Subaru asks Amelia what exactly she saw in the trial. What we learn is that a long time ago, Lolly Amelia lived in a forest with a bunch of elves and someone she considered her mother, who she refers mother to as Fortuna. Fortuna. Amelia seems to have repressed a lot of memories from that time, but knows that something really bad happened and everyone was frozen. Many years later, she broke free from the ice and met Puck, and after that, Roswell showed up and promised Amelia that he'd be able to save Cap. all the frozen elves only if she wins the royal select. Perhaps we can thaw them out. I didn't think it was possible for Roswell to appear more sus than he already is, but they definitely made that happen with this yep. episode. Anyway, ever since Amelia met Puck, she's been reliant on him for almost everything. So at the start of season 2, when Puck disappeared for no reason- So, the joke I made about Puck not needing a contract to exist with us all the time, and him just going away, I guess, is to make Amelia more independent. So that she doesn't keep relying on Puck anymore. We need to get rid of the training wheels. Amelia must now grow up and stop being a little girl and be a big girl. I mean, Subaru is there, but I don't think it's the same level of dependence. In fact, the dependence on Puck is probably different from dependence on Subaru as the relationship between Subaru and Amelia might even become romantic at the end of this shit, and they might be working together rather than just one-sided reliance on Puck. And like Adobe Flash player, Amelia wasn't able to do anything on her own because she still clung to a small bit of hope that he might return. However, now that she knows he isn't coming back, she finally has some closure and she can start moving on and Thanks, Puck, I guess. Yeah, the thing holding her back is the hope that he might come back, and now if it's final that she just, she just goes away. All right. I think that Puck can return to the story later on when Amelia has dealt with the trials and become more independent and has established some sort of competency to not rely on other people as much as she relied on Puck before. And then Puck can return to the story, and it'll be a more mature Amelia, and everything will be happy. Maybe we can make another contract. I don't know. And doing things on her own. More importantly, does that mean Amelia is no longer a spirit art user? Because in the Frozen Bond movie, before the contract was made, Amelia was doing crazy ice bloom magic. But at that point, she's a mage, right? She's not a spirit art user. The moment that she made a contract with Puck and then started to work with Puck, that's a spirit art user. He still has lesser spirits? True. True, I guess. She's a lesser spirit art user now. Wah wah. The seal on Amelia's memories has been lifted. So after this episode, I think Amelia- I ain't gonna lie, guys. I think the spirits are holding us back. I've seen fr what Frozen Bond Amelia can do. Not in terms of just the crazy blooming magic, but her martial arts. Amelia is super strong, and her magic is formidable. She just can't control it. <laughs> I, th I, th I think we're nerfed right now. Amelia straight up nerfed until she can control that power. Once she learns how to control that power, that's gonna be some insane shit. Like, you have- like, a, a minor injury, just a cut, then ice starts to fucking form out of that shit, sucks your blood out, just kills you like that. Insane. Amelia can finally give the trial a solid attempt. It's time for her to get some self-confidence and learn that she can do things on her own. And that's mm -hmm. why it's important that Subaru lets her take the trials alone instead- That's right, we need to abandon Amelia. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, but abandoning Amelia is what made her into the Yandere mode. The mind break one. But times are different this time because she has the memories that can withstand trial one. Last time she repeated it multiple times after being isolated while still clinging on to Puck's hope of returning. And she spammed the trial without those memories back. Therefore, she became mind broken. Instead of taking them for her. Another reason this Puck scene was important is because it disproves a theory I've been hearing from the community. What? If we think back to the Frozen Bonds OVA. Yeah. Wait, are you telling me you haven't seen Frozen Bonds? I've seen Literally, it. Literally, what are you doing? Why would you be watching my videos when you could be watching the Frozen Bonds OVA instead? If you Great OV. If you haven't watched it, go check it out. But just a warning. It's really sad. I'm going to feel so bad for Amelia. Haven't seen Frozen Bonds. Go watch it right now. If you care at all about Amelia. <laughs> I remember that. The little... Look at, look at the... 
the most viewed section in this video. Look at the engagement bar. Everyone wants to see that Amelia shut the door with her butt again. Once, go watch it right now. But you care <laughs> that that little animation, that butt close animation, such a little thing, such a minor trivial little thing that they showed, but people fucking love it. At all about Amelia's past as a plot point, you need to see this OVA. <laughs> if we think back to the Frozen Bonds OVA, a lot of you guys theorized that Puck was the one responsible for freezing the elves, which would have never. I always thought it was Amelia. Explained why he disappeared at the beginning of season two. Disappearing at the beginning of season two. I thought this might have something to do with the excessiveness of interfering with Amelia's life and the oath that he made with Kidna. But also, maybe this is the beginning steps of wanting... Puck knew that he can't be around Amelia too much and now is starting to get ready to break the contract. A summoner has disconnected. If he knew Amelia was going to see her repressed memories in the trials, it would have made sense for Puck to abandon her because she probably wouldn't have forgiven him after seeing what he did. However, mm, true. this week's episode showed us that that isn't the case. Puck had entirely different reasons for abandoning Amelia, which means that he most likely wasn't responsible for freezing the elves. Yeah, I, th I thought this was always Amelia because of the powers that she showed us in the beginning of Frozen Bond and the fact that she was herself was frozen in there. So I'm like, she must have just went berserk. We've seen her powers to be out of control and to be this crazy ice power, so... I've never thought it was Puck. So if Puck is innocent, then that narrows it down to just two suspects. That's right. It was? Mediator Melaquera. No, it's, it's, it's Roswell. No, it's Amelia. It's simply Amelia going berserk and losing sense control of her insane powers, right? Of course, it could always be the work of a character we haven't seen yet. But at the moment, Roswell and Amelia herself are the only two characters capable- Now, even though I believe it's Amelia, Theorizing that it could be Roswell is also fun. Creating a reason for Amelia to be swayed into accepting the royal selection. Yeah. I'd be down to assume it's Roswell. Yeah. ...capable of casting such a high-level freezing spell. It still isn't confirmed, but there's been a lot of little details that could be hints. So if you've been paying attention, you might have a good idea of who's responsible. And as I feel like it's still gonna be Amelia due to the berserk nature, but if you think that Roswell's the one that did it, maybe the Grimoire told them to do it, and I don't know. But the details of Frozen Bond, what happened? Ah, fuck, I don't really remember the details anymore. The events leading up to it, and then Amelia going berserk and sealing herself in the ice, right? I forget. As always, I'd be happy to hear your guys' theories in the comment section below. Anyway, after some NSFW hand-holding, Subaru promises to stay there with Amelia all night. Nope. But when she wakes up, he's gone. In one <gasps> of her most vulnerable moments, Subaru lied to her, even- Again, broke another promise, but intentionally. No, he already knows how important promises are to Spirit Arts users. I remember how pissed I was at Subaru when I first read this part of the novel, so I'm assuming some of you guys might feel the same way. I felt... yeah, it felt... very messed up. But then I think about, does it make sense that he would have just done this on a whim, or randomly? No! Clearly, there is intention in this, and we're trying to make Amelia more independent and go face the trials. And he came back at the end too, maybe he was setting something up. If you do, let me know. But overall, this episode was fantastic. Unless it was just fucking stupid and there was no point to it and he literally just left for no reason, then that would be actually fucking stupid. Fantastic. It was mostly set up, like I said, but at least we finally solved the puck mystery. The coming weeks are going to be absolutely incredible. I'm finally going to see my favorite moments in all of ReZero animated, and I hope you guys are just as excited. They're hyping up. Man, second core of season two is getting super, super hyped up, so... I mean... If there's anything we've seen from ReZero, right? The lows are as low as the highs are as high. We've seen just how magnificent, the glorious, the subjugation of the whale and to defeat the witch cult was, right? We've seen all of that. It's just in season two, we haven't gotten any of that. It's just been taking L's and we're just taking... It's just so low right now in terms of any triumphant moments. So I hope that for the rest of the season, it's just the path upwards and we make it out of here and everything is good.
too. I am a bit sad that we didn't get the new opening or ending. In fact, they played the old ending, which surprised me, but it's all good. White Fox knows what they're doing. ReZero is the best anime ever, and this episode was another 10, 10 out of 10. 10. <laughs> ReZero is the best anime ever? Honestly, the more I watch this show, the more I'm inclined to believe it. It is an insane thing to say, but everyone has their own preferences, preferences and a value system that is different that makes you think that Razor could be better, but it is a fantastic show. It really is. I, 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 again, I, I think it, it might be my favorite anime at this point. Even if you don't like the plot of ReZero, you can't- Like, the plot is the most amazing thing to me. The world is so fucking deep, rich, vibrant. Witches, cults, vows, oath promises, weapons, spirits, all, all these crazy shit. Political affairs, different structures of different continents. Potential of fucking more isekai otherworlders and like the mysteries of the witches cult and like everything about it. It just fits everything I want. Very rare. It's just the setting, the environment is just my bias. I can't deny that it's got some of the best characters you've ever seen. I think Otto and Subaru really shined this episode. It was great to finally see Subaru with some confidence, especially after everything he's been Ooh. through. And Otto is just such a great friend. It makes me so happy that Subaru's got someone like him on his team. I and that's exactly why I'm so scared. I feel like Otto is the perfect candidate to die to make an impact on Subaru. The one friend that saved him in this moment to then die and then to have a checkpoint made afterwards, I think is definitely possible if not 100% possible. Like, I am not gonna get too close to this character because I know, like, these, these, like, nothing good can come from this. Tape is fucking twisting this shit and dangling this friendship and good thing, but we know, we've seen what ReZero has done, so I'm worried. Bruce got someone like him on his team. I can't wait until next week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you give it a like and subscribe to be notified. Yes, sir, please go give Mr. Echidna a like on the video. Here's the channel. Go check out his channel if you haven't. And yeah, the whole season part one has been quote unquote a drag, even though I enjoyed a lot of it because of the amazing lore regarding the witches and Roswell's secrets. But definitely I could understand why people think that it's just fucking dragging along and nothing is happening, even though a lot of things are happening. It's just, it's just the result of spending way too much time in one place and seemingly making no progress. But I think from on here and out, right? It's just only up and hopefully it's going to be a magnificent ending to this season.